Okay, thank you. So, uh, hi everyone. Once again, my name is uh, Tomasz Wańczyk and I'm a senior DevOps engineer at SoftServe. Uh, today, I would like to share with you approach that I use uh, in order to manage SkinAker by the code. <clears throat> Time ago, uh, when I was involved in project where we had around 30 microservices, uh, the most of them uh, we deployed in the same way, uh, using the same pattern. And I believe this is a common approach for microservices world. Uh, and that's why I decided to make a common solution to easily uh, add a new in in microservice and have like one place where we uh, where I need to introduce the change. Um, so I performed some investigation what solution could be choose for that and I, I found a SkinAker, it was I don't know two years ago and I decided to use it because it provides such functionality, uh, it can be managed by the code and uh, this is not only the one thing that SkinAker is good in, so uh, let me uh, describe the key features. <clears throat> Most of most of you most likely uh, knows the key feature uh, what what Spinnaker is. I know that uh, already there was a presentation which uh, explained deeply uh, what Spinnaker is and what are the key features. Anyway, from my point of view, one one uh, feature is also really cool and uh, makes this tool uh, awesome when it comes to microservices deployment and management, so it's application management. So here you have uh, a general overview on one, uh, one page that you can see uh, what is the current state on, of the deployed components. So for instance, here we have uh, two uh, EKS clusters that are connected to this uh, SpinAker. We have almost or four environments, each is in own namespace. And as you can see, here is also the mm, history of the rollout. So I can easily see what was the previous deployment. Uh, what is the state of the uh, pod? Green color means that pod is healthy. In fact, here I don't put any uh, additional uh, graphic that shows what additional operation can be performed here. Anyway, I can uh, say that you can scale uh, this deployment by a simple click. You could do under rollout so you can just roll back the deployment to the previous revision. You can edit objects, but of course it's not recommended. You can just uh, click on the deployment object and define the, the new label as you want. And finally, you can delete uh, individual pod, you can delete whole deployment, you can make uh, this totally not available. And this is really cool because, um, for instance, in our project, we have developers who can deploy their, their own feature branches on their own. And that's cool because uh, we do not need to spend time on it as a developer, as a DevOps engineers, uh, which makes this tool really useful, not only for us, but for the whole team. So uh, what, are, what are the key features when it comes to the application deployment area? So SpinAker provides na native support for common deployment strategies thanks to the rollout strategies function. And I would like to focus a bit about, to, about this uh, feature. It's not really useful as it can be because uh, you need to be uh, aware that it relies on the labels for the service and replica set. So, in general, the idea behind that is that you need to have already defined service, Kubernetes service, which some kind of labels, and you need to deploy the replica set. SpinAker automatically manages the labels for this replica set and based on that defines the traffic. So the one disadvantage of this approach is that you need to you don't need to use or you don't have to use deployment objects. And the second thing that you need to already have this service deployed on the namespace, which from my point of view, is not so good. I prefer do it as part of the whole deployment process inside the pipeline. But in general, the manifest based approach, uh, this is the current approach for uh, deployment. So it means that you can use any uh, manifest from Kubernetes and just deploy it on, on, uh, on the cluster. 
the um, pipeline artifacts it means that you can um, you can use external resources as part of the pipeline i'm not going to describe each of them anyway these are common resources that you use already in your pipelines uh, of course it supports multiple tri triggers including uh, docker registry so um, spinnaker can uh, trigger pipeline as soon as new image appears in ECL repo, for instance. You have CLI for setup, for setup and administration. It's a call, tool called uh, SPIN, and I will focus more about that. Of course, you have a great tool for administration. It's called Halyard. Um, this tool uh, is responsible or is being used not only for configuration, but also for administration, for deployment, and uh, let me explain a bit how it works. <clears throat> so it's very intuitive uh, command line tool, uh, which um, creates as a configuration file, uh, some kind of YAN file. And if you want to apply this uh, configuration, it just converts it to the uh, Kubernetes object. So it means that uh, higher just uh, orchestrate the deployment process on Kubernetes. And finally, what we will be what we'll be covering here, uh, it's uh, pipeline templates. Mm, this is the great thing that uh, allows us to um, make this cool solution and make this automation. Uh, but as I said, I will cover it later on. And of course, as this is a common, let's say, uh, continuous delivery solution, we have well-defined common types of stages. So we have bake manifest. It allows you to uh, render or to, uh, let's say, um, compound, uh, create the, the final object, manifest or object, Kubernetes object based on the uh, hand chart. Additional, uh, additional uh, stages like find artifacts from execution. This is really cool because it allows you to get exactly uh, the same artifact, for instance, Helm chart uh, from different pipelines. So it's a good solution for um, application promotion from, let's say, a staging to production or from dev to staging. So what we have implemented in the code. Um, so the first thing, uh, as we are going to cover uh, the maintenance and setup of Spinnaker is a uh, uh, Terraform module for Spinnaker. So, um, as there are many approaches to deploy uh, Spinnaker, we have chosen uh, Helm uh, as a deployment provider, uh, where we have already implemented authorization uh, via Azure ID. Uh, we have support for multiple AKS clusters, for ECL repositories, for Slack notifications. We have also support for S3 artifacts um, because um, in general, we deploy Helm charts uh, um, as, a, as a source of our deployment. We use Helm charts uh, and we store these Helm charts in S3 buckets. Uh, and finally, we expose this application by simple uh, Kubernetes service, which is load balancer, uh, which leverage ACM certificates. So, one important thing which I uh, miss here is uh, X509 API gateway. Uh, what is that? This is additional port which expose API of uh, Spinnaker. Uh, it's a bit tricky to implement this uh, because it's not well documented. Anyway, it's important if you want to have uh, this spin, spin CLI uh, command line integration uh, and you also have Azure ID integration because you need to somehow authenticate over um, Spinnaker so we have like a two points of authentication one is this Azure ID which is a common solution for uh, end users and if we want to um, aut automate this process by Spin CLI we just use uh, the second port and uh, X509 uh, authentication. So uh, as a second thing that we will cover here is pipelines management. 
So in general, we I decided to implement it, it as a null resource Terraform uh, that just calls spin CLI. Why I choose this solution? I know that there are any uh, many other, but this is compatible with with the current uh, mm, let's say recommended approach for managing pipelines. I mean using the spin CLI. Uh, I will also cover a bit different approaches and say a few words about them, but for now you need to know that uh, we decided or I decided to, to go for that. What issues we have faced during this implementation, and I would say that the main and the big one um, is the cross-account access to ECR catalog, and this works only when assuming role. Let me explain what it means. So basically we have few accounts and we have Spinnaker deployed in one account, but ECR repositories are configured in different accounts. Sorry for my, my microphone. The thing is that Spinnaker is able to get the list of the ECR repositories. So you don't need to specify them during the, I don't know, setup, maintenance, deployment, and so on. But there is a big limitation from AWS, and uh, we even asked AWS about that, and they, they wrote us, they replied us to just use assume role for that. But this is a bit tricky when it comes to Spinnaker, uh, because it's easy when you use AWS provider. Uh, we still uh, are talking about Kubernetes provider, and in that way, it's not easy to assume the role um to get the list of uh, ecr repos and the big disadvantage of our solution is that we need to define the list of ecr repositories in our helm module i mean this this terraform helm module uh, so each time we need to add new app we just need to redeploy this in acre it's not a big deal we just need to i don't know add one line uh, but still, it's something that should be covered, let's say, automatically. For now, it, it's done in that way. So let me explain a bit what is higher because uh, it's uh, quite important too when it comes to the whole story. Uh, so it's a command line administration tool that manages the life cycle of the Spinnaker deployment, including writing, write data, your deployments configuration. Uh, and there are, as I said, there are many approaches to deploy Spinnaker, including Spinnaker oper Operator, Quit Install Manifest, and, and many other. But in, in general, it, it's all about this Halyard, which is somewhere uh, inside this solution, execute and uh, orchestrate the process. So uh, even if ours, even if we, let's say, use this hand chart, we still need to have knowledge about this Halyard, and uh, here is here are the let's say the key tasks that we had to um, uh, accomplish to to create this terraform model so once again we uh, are using hand chart for that it means that the the key, ch key challenge here is to uh, create the values file template and uh, provide there some basic logic i will explain it a bit later at some point of time, when we dealt with this X509 certificate, we had to prepare, prepare own Halyard with AWS CLI. I will also explain why. Um, one of the challenges that we faced uh, was that um, Spinnaker implements some old Java. I don't know exactly what is the version, but this Java version uh, does not support uh this latest let's say uh approach for eks roles by attaching service accounts to pods so uh, it's also some kind of limitation anyway we have we have support for that uh during the process of implementation you need to create s3 buckets you need to create IAM roles and users that simply will uh, provide data for spinnaker um, as you know or not, Spinnaker data is, is stored in S3 bucket. Of course, you can make it more advanced uh, 
uh, usage, but still it's, it's like a basic approach. So as I said, um, in order to create this uh, Terraform module, we had to provide uh, external access to uh, user interface service, API service, and this new service, which will be used only by our automation. So um, let's focus on uh, values files, which is a uh, value file, in fact, because this is the one file that you need to manage uh, in order to uh, in order to provide a solution, an automated solution for setup. So um, there is a section in this file which provides you ability to define own commands which will be executed during initialization. Uh, and here is uh, an example, or here are a few lines of this, uh, of this file. And we had to provide here, we had to implement here uh, some conditional statement to let's say make a cleanup before next deployment. Uh, so I, I, as can you see here, we just execute some uh, commands to add uh, um, artifacts bucket, to add uh, Docker registry account uh, and support for ECR. Um, here are the, the next part of that and uh, let me explain a bit the, the bold uh, fonts. So as I said, uh, the plan is to uh, expose X509 uh, authentication API uh, to, for Spin CLI. And uh, as part of this Terraform module, we had also implemented null resources, which simply generates the certificates. Uh, these certificates are being used in, uh, in, in this file. The, the thing related to AWS CLI that must be supported by this Halyard pod, which in fact is responsible for this deployment process, uh, is related to this certificate because somehow we need to um, provide, put these certificates into this pod. And as you can see later on, we just do some AWS commands to get these files from S3 bucket. So we have somewhere else in the, outside the Terraform module the, the code which puts the uh, certificates uh, inside S3 bucket. As you can see, Halyards allows you to do a lot of uh, operations, not only typical uh, setup operations, but also you can define the size, the requests and limits for the pods. And it was useful because we also faced an issue with the evicted pods for EKS. Uh, so one of our great colleagues made this change and improved this process by uh, defining some uh, resources for, for containers. Uh, here is the, the last important thing when it comes to hand charts and uh, Terraform model for Spinnaker. Uh, part of this Output is not well documented, as I said. So here we have implementation of this uh, gate CI/CD API. Uh, we have also implementation for or some configs for Azure ID integration. Uh, it can be found some somehow on Google, but it's not well documented. And there is a nice feature inside this hand chart that you can just define the feature because Spinnaker leverage a feature flags. So if you want to go for this approach, if you want to use pipeline template, you need to um, you need to add this as Spinnaker feature flag here in Ham chart. Of course, I, I didn't say that, say that, but uh, Ham chart is official, available for uh, for from uh, Spinnaker team. Uh, how about the different EKS clusters that uh, are accessible by this uh, Spinnaker? So somewhere outside the Terraform module, when we create EKS cluster, or uh, we just put a cube context, uh, or we just edit this config file, which is uh, stored in encrypted form in S3 bucket, and uh, context just define uh, the, the account which is in fact the cluster uh, available for uh, Spinnaker. So here we have some logic just, just 
for iteration over all of the context that we pass to the um, Terraform module. So let's focus on pipeline templates as this is the more important thing when it comes to this uh, automation. So what are pipeline templates? Uh, these are some kind of uh, JSON files which can be distributed and reusable pipelines across your team or among multiple teams. Uh, currently, there are two versions of Spinnaker templates. Uh, there is a second current version and the first one. Um, there are some difference between uh, those uh, pipeline templates implementations. I would just go for second version. It's maybe not so flexible. I will explain why, but it's a current solution and you'll never know when they disable the first one. There is also a more advanced usage of uh, pipeline templates, which is available for Spinnaker. The guys from Netflix introduced some SpoonNet library. It's a JSONnet library specifically for Spinnaker. And uh, I have never used that. Anyway, this is like a template language uh, that can you, that allows you to improve over experience of templates by supporting modularization and, and stuff like that. So in general, how looks the workflow of template pipelines? Uh, first thing that you need to create, create the paper, pipeline template. Second thing is that you need to create configuration for the template. It's some kind of instance of the template. And finally, you can just create a template. So as an example, uh, in the last versions of Spinnaker, you have even support in uh, UI. So you can directly uh, edit, maybe not edit, but you can directly create a pipeline from the template using UI. Uh, and that's really cool, but we would not focus on that as we are going to create Terraform code. So a few words about the old uh, pipeline templates. Uh, this approach is still supported. And uh, when you try to find out, let's say, some kind of Terraform support for Spinnaker, you can find that there is a module uh, under link that you see on my screen. And it comes from the uh, Armory, this is like a company which focused mostly on Spinnaker. Uh, and this module, in fact, supports only this first version, uh, which I believe it's not uh, a good solution right now. I know that there is a, this advantage, or advantage, in fact, that uh, when you change the template, it automatically leads to the change of the pipeline, some kind of uh, backend work is done behind the scenes anyway. Uh, I would say it's not not good approach and the same thing uh, I read that uh, says uh, developers from Netflix because it's not so scala scalable. Uh, that's why um, I went for the first, sorry, second version of pipeline templates. And how it looks like currently. So official way of uh, templates management of version two is just to use the spin CLI. This is a Golang tool uh, still uh, under development. You can find, find some bugs, but anyway, it works. Uh, and I, I don't feel it's not usable. So, Spin can manage whole life cycle on, of the managed pipeline templates version two. It's uh, that this version allows you really easy to create a new pipeline template because you just need to create, for instance, uh, some pipeline by UI, and you can just get the JSON of the pipeline by some call. It's already on my screen. By changing or adding a few fields, it's uh, well documented. You can turn this pipeline into JSON pipeline template uh, and simply save it. This is a general approach if you want to uh, create a template. On the right side, you see some kind of example. 
So you just define the variables of the template. Uh, you define the steps or the um, stages, uh, which are uh, part of this uh, template. And in fact, you can override on or add new one during uh, creation of this uh, pipeline config, which I will cover in next uh, in next slide. So this is really simple if you want to create a pipeline template, especially for this version two, because version one, as I said, it's more complicated, more advanced, more flexible, but they decided to, to go for this approach. Uh, so let's assume that we have this uh, pipeline template and we want to create a pipeline. Uh, so you need to create new JSON file, um, the base structure of the JSON file is already on my screen on the right side. Uh, you just need to provide the values for the variables of that pipeline template. Uh, you can exclude, for instance, triggers or, or I don't know, a few other um, items of the pipeline. So, for instance, in the pipeline template, you have trigger for Docker, but you want to disable it for production. Uh, because you want to deploy production on your own. So you can just exclude this from, from the template. You can add additional stage here. And finally, you can use spin CLI to save this into, um, into SpinAcre. Uh, and that's it. So, uh, as I said, the Armory provider, which is available on GitHub, rely on version wide pipelines. Uh, as we commonly use Terraform, I just wanted to extend our code with the pipeline code. Currently, we have, I don't know, over 15 microservices and uh, the same pattern. We just deploy uh, every microservice in the same way. So we can uh, use uh, the same template. On the right side, in general, you see my Terraform structure for that. Um, it's implemented in a way that if you change a uh, template, uh, you just trigger change of the, um, of the pipeline, which is related to this template. I heard some voices that it's a big disadvantage of the version two because it uh, doesn't happen automatically. Anyway, it's really easy. You just need to save this once again and you uh, accomplish this in exactly um, let's say effect is the same. As I said, we will rely on null resource. Uh, I'm aware that this solution is, should be the last choice, but to be honest, uh, to be honest, I haven't found any better approach for that and uh, it works in general. So basically here you have my config file. Uh, as I said, we, um, create this, uh, we create this certificate uh, using Terraform code. Um, how to create this certificates, how to create this X509 API, it's uh, already on the SpinAcre documentation side. It's not a big deal. A few commands you need to execute and that's it. And how the code looks like. So uh, basically uh, here is the first part. So uh, we have uh, pipeline templates which are defined for each workspace. Uh, workspace in our usage is uh, environment. So I have development environment, I have staging environment, I have production environment, which in fact are two, prod staging and prod. And I created some uh, structure that is uh, visible on my uh, left part of monitor screen. <clears throat> uh, it's kind of really simple structure. And how I uh, triggers this uh, and create these uh, pipelines uh, on SpinAcre. So first of all, I create uh, the files from the templates. Uh, I just iterate over all of the uh, dictionaries that I have for each workspace and uh, put somewhere the file on the local file system. 
And finally, I have a null resource. It's called Spinnaker template. I do the same. I iterate over uh, all environments. And what's important here? Uh, the most important part, I would say, as usual for null resources, is uh, triggers definition because, uh, as I said, it's implemented in a way that if we change uh, the template, it triggers also the change for pipeline. Sorry, the the template it triggers also the change for the pipeline. So basically, the code is very simple here. Uh, I just Sorry, I just uh, um, use uh, the template ID as the name of the uh, dictionary, and uh, and that's it. Here is the second part, more important: how I um, how I create these things uh, and put it for Spinnaker. So basically. Uh, I just do an echo command and I save the output of this command to some local file and execute the spin CLI command to uh, save it on, on Spinnaker. What's important here, I also implemented destroy command. It's, uh, it works fine. Uh, so if I want to, you need to be aware that it's also the difference between version one and version two. In version one, there was strict relationship between template and uh, pipeline. Uh, in version two, there is no strict relationship. You can just remove uh, template and nothing bad happens. Uh, you just use the template in time when you render this uh, pipeline and that's it. So that's why I can easily uh, implement here this destroy command, which does not affect, in fact, the already created pipelines. What is important when it comes to the um, templates? Um, because, as you know, the template, Python template itself um, supports variables. So if you want to use this approach, you need to remember to uh, escape. Uh, Spinnaker pipeline templates, variables. So just add second dollar sign and, and that's it. Uh, Terraform will uh, don't touch such kind of variables. And finally, you will have variable after a render of the on the Terraform level. Second thing. Uh, mm, let's say the last one is the pipeline so this is a bit more uh, complex structure uh, we define the application i have not covered here the application creation because this is really simple and it's similar approach i just do a null resource on two applications because you need to know that in general for spinnaker you have application inside application you have pipelines and uh, infrastructure parts. So uh, I define here the, the application that is going to be assigned to this pipeline. Uh, template path, uh, it's, uh, in fact, this is not the template of uh, um, pipeline, but this is this configuration for the template. So here I just define the variables, the values for the variables of the pipeline template. Mm, what else? Here I also pass the mm, values of the template variables. So in fact, if I uh, if I have different buckets, for instance, for different environments, I just put the value here for for I don't know for their dev there is one value for for staging there is different value. Environment defines in fact the cluster that I'm going to deploy on. Uh, namespace, it's obvious, I would say. Uh, deployment account, uh, sorry, this is this is the value for the EKS cluster and environment defines the, the, uh, the environment variables tree. Uh, I mean, we have like uh, SSM parameters which defines the configuration for microservices. Uh, and uh, it, it's some kind of prefix for, for this uh, approach. 
So on the right side, you have uh, you have an example definition for that environment, and there is this is an instance of one pipeline for one application called campaign. Uh, here we have the name of the pipeline. Here we define which which uh, pipeline template we use and other things, as I already have covered, I believe. And what we do with that, we just uh, do the same in general. What we do for pipeline templates, the one thing is here uh, that we uh, somehow create this relationship between template pipeline template and the application. So we define the string, uh, which if it's changed, it triggers the, uh, the change of this Spinnaker pipeline as well. So I, I do the same. I iterate over all of the items in uh, my uh, data structure uh, and I execute operations like on my screen. So on the right side, you have, uh, let's say, the file which are being created during this process on the file system. Uh, it's an example. And on the left side, you have the operation, the call to spin CLI, which just put, execute this file against Spinnaker. And finally, after that, you see the pipeline on your Spinnaker uh, setup. I believe that's it for now. Uh, if you have some questions, uh, it's a good moment to ask me. Was it painful to implement all of this? Um, in general, I, to be honest, Spinnaker is not easy to implement. Uh, the painful is not the Terraform implementation itself. It's, I would say, easy. But uh, if you go, if you want to go for Spinnaker, you really need to be sure that you have time for it. <laughs> it's, it, wor it works to do that. But uh, the effort is quite big, I would say. Because there are many things, many small items that you need to be aware of. Uh, and it's not about the thing, it's not about the story of, I don't know, three or four, two days, it's, I would say, two or two or three, four weeks, something like that. Okay, thank you. I have one question. Uh, so, how you join, you created uh, AKS cluster to Spinnaker? It is some uh, automatically uh, way or it's manual job just adding uh, kube config to Spinnaker? Sure. Uh, so the question is how we integrate EKS cluster with Spinnaker. And for instance, at some moment we have Spinnaker already deployed. And the question is how to add new cluster. Yes, correct. Uh, so basically, as I said, uh, Spinnaker uh, uses. Uh, a cube config file which store, stores different contexts. So in order to add new EKS cluster to Spinnaker, you just need to add new context uh, and provide this context name directly to the Spinnaker module. Uh, in our case, it's a hand chart. So if you would not go for the Terraform implementation, but you have like a hand chart, you need to at first uh, edit the cube config file, this common cube config which is stored on S3 bucket. And finally, you need to provide the name of the new context and redeploy hand chart, just upgrade it, and that's it. Okay, thanks. Any other questions? <laughs>